Okay, good morning, dear students. So we'll start with the uh, phylum Hemichordata. So in the previous class, we had discussed about the phylum Mollusca and Echinodermata. So we'll start with the uh, description of phylum Hemichordata. So Hemichordata, that is the example of Hemichordata. So Hemichordata was earlier considered as a subphylum of Chordata. So now it has been separated from chordata. Uh, so because it had pharyngeal gill slits similar to chordates, it was placed under phylum chordata. But now they have separated the semi-chordata and have placed it under a separate phylum, hemi-chordata. So earlier it was subphylum of chordata. Why had they included it under subphylum of chordata was because similar to chordates, uh, these hemichordates had pharyngeal gill slits, but now uh, they have placed under a separate phylum hemichordata and no more are they considered a subphylum of chordata. Okay, so what are the characteristics features of this phylum chordata? So you have this balenoclossus. The background picture is the uh, balenoclossus. Probably you might not have seen because they are all marine forms. So what are the characteristic features of phylum hemichordata or salient features of hemichordata are they exhibit organ system grade of organization. So they exhibit this organ system grade of organization. The symmetry is bilateral. So you can divide the organism into two equal halves in only one plane. The number of germ layers that they have is three germ layers. So they are triploblastic animals. So since they have the our ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm, they are considered to be triploblastic animals. Based on the coelom, hemichordata, they are coelomate animals. That is the coelom is lined by mesoderm. Okay, they have a true coelom. So the hemichordata are coelomate animals. So habit and habitat, they are exclusively marine. And digestive system is complete because they have both uh, mouth and anus separately. So digestive system is complete since they have mouth and anus uh, separate openings, okay? The respiratory system, they are consisting of gills. So the respiratory system in case of hemichordata, they are made up of gills. Circulatory system is open type. That is, they are going to pump the blood into, uh, the heart pumps the blood, in, uh, blood into the open spaces. They don't have capillaries, arteries, and veins. So we call this type of circulatory system as open type of circulatory system. Then reproduction, in case of this hemichordata, it is dioecious. So they are dioecious implies male and female are separate individuals. So external fertilization takes place. That is the gametes are released in water and diffusion of gametes takes place in water. So the hemichordata, they are dioecious. They exhibit external fertilization. Development is indirect since they have larval stages. So development is indirect since they have larval stages. They have uh, unique features of this balenoclossus is they have worm-like cylindrical body with proboscis so they have a, a part of it, which we call it as proboscis. You can notice this. So they have a worm-like appearance, but then their body consists of proboscis, trunk, collar. This region is a collar and the trunk. So they have worm-like cylindrical body with proboscis, collar, and trunk, okay? The collar-based stomach cord excretion is by proboscis gland. So collar, the collar-based stomachord, which is a primitive type of notochord-like structure, okay? So the excretion is by proboscis gland. So the examples of this phylum hemichordata is belenoglossus, which is also called as tongue worm and sacoglossus. So hemichordata, you should remember belenoglossus, which is also called as tongue worm and sacoglossus. They are the two examples that you have to remember for this phylum hemichordata. So hemichordata has been separated from the phylum chordata and they are given a position of phylum. Earlier they were considered to be subphylum of phylum chordata, but now they are placed under a separate phylum 
hemi chordata uh, earlier why they had placed it under chordata was similar to chordates they had pharyngeal gill slits but they did not have notochord so they have primitive notochord like structure called as stoma cord so that is the reason they have been separated from chordates so no more the hemi chordates are placed under chordates they are placed under hemi a separate phylum hemi chordata and they are considered to be one of the non chordates okay the example for this a uh, phylum hemichordata are balenoglossus the tongue worm and sacoglossus so these are the two examples now unique feature if you look into it so they have this proboscis worm like cylindrical body and uh, they are formed of anterior proboscis a collar region is there this region is the collar and the collar they bear stomochord so you can see this stomochord so the collar based stoma stomochord what is stomochord a rudimentary structure similar to notochord but they are not notochord they are a primitive type of structure almost equivalent to notochord so we call that as stomochord and they are found only in the collar region excretion is by the proboscis gland okay so the trunk region also you can see their body is divided into uh, proboscis collar and trunk excretion is by this proboscis gland okay so proboscis is the uh, upper region of it so anterior proboscis collar and trunk so the collar bears stomochord a primitive rudimentary structure of notochord excretion is by proboscis gland so these are the unique features of uh, the phylum hemichordata the examples are balenoglossus this is the balenoglossus which we call it as tongue worm and they are all marine forms even i have not seen it uh, so but these are all the marine forms okay and this is sacoglossus this is called as balenoglossus or tongue worm and this is called as sacoglossus so these are the two examples of phylum hemichordata the next phylum that we are going to study and uh, which you are all more familiar with is phylum chordata see I, under this phylum chordata you can see the birds okay and the fish so they all are placed under this phylum chordata so the aves as well as fishes they are all placed under the phylum chordata so phylum chordata if you have to place any animal under phylum chordata it should have certain characteristic feature so the animal should have notochord okay they should have dorsal tubular nerve cord and pharyngeal gill slits okay any animal which has notochord dorsal tubular nerve cord and pharyngeal gill slits they are all included under phylum chordata now we are human beings are also placed under phylum chordata class mammalia we are placed under but we don't have notochord isn't it we don't have pharyngeal gill slits but why are we placed under phylum chordata in the embryonic stage we possess all these we possess the notochord uh, the pharyngeal gill slits in embryonic stage we have those but as the embryo develops and the fetus is formed many of the structures they are lost okay so you don't see the pharyngeal gill slits or notochord in case of mammals uh, they are placed under vertebratum okay so the notochord is replaced by vertebral column okay so that is the feature of it so either in the adults or in the embryonic stage they should be having the notochord dorsal tubular nerve cord and pharyngeal gill slits so notochord if you look into see here they have the slide of different types of uh, examples for phylum chordata so these as size as i it is acedia this example fishes the ornamental fishes okay pisces amphibians reptiles birds and mammals so these are all placed under phylum chordata phylum chordata is divided into three subphylums subphylum uh, the cephalochordata urochordata and vertebrata subphylum vertebrata earlier they had subphylum hemichordata but now that has been replaced has been removed from phylum chordata and they are placed under a separate phylum hemichordata okay so remember about this notochord is a flexible rod 
located you can notice this notochord it is a flexible rod located in the mid dorsal line between the alimentary canal and the nerve cord so between the alimentary canal and the nerve cord you find this notochord okay so in the embryonic stage you can notice that so notochord is a flexible rod located in the mid dorsal line between the nerve cord and the alimentary canal in the embryo okay here you can find that notochord is throughout the body okay so this is the example of the notochord so in the embryonic stage you can find that so notochord is a flexible rod located in the mid dorsal line between the alimentary canal and the dorsal nerve cord so the dorsal tubular nerve cord okay in the embryo now let us know the differences between chordates and non chordates so in chordata notochord is found in the embryonic stage non chordates non chordates include all the phylum from phylum porifera to phylum hemichordata they are all non chordates okay so notochord is absent in non chordates central nervous system is dorsal hollow and single whereas in non chordata they are ventral solid and double so the non chordata you can notice the uh, nervous system is ventral solid and double so the pharyngeal gill slits are present in chordata in non chordata the pharyngeal gill slits are absent chordata the heart is ventral in position even in human beings it is ventral in position whereas in non chordate they are dorsal in uh, dorsal heart is noticed a post anal part is present a post anal tail is present or part is present whereas a post anal part is not present in case of non chordata they don't have tail so a post anal part is present uh, Uh, that is the tail is present tail is absent in case of non chordata so these are the differences between chordata and non chordata okay so again you can see this slides so pharyngeal gill slits or clefts are found dorsal uh, solid uh, tubular and uh, hollow and tubular nerve cord is found whereas ventral solid and double is noticed in non chordata this is a chordata pharyngeal gill slits are there ventral heart post anal tail or part is found so which is unique in case of uh, these uh, chordata now phylum chordata if you take the classification they are three classified into three sub phylums subphylum urochordata it is also called as tunicata acidium is the example then subphylum cephalochordata and subphylum vertebrata so these are the three subphylums of phylum chordata so phylum chordata is divided into three subphylum subphylum urochordata uh, which has uh, it is also called as tunicata example is acidium subphylum cephalochordata and subphylum vertebrata so these are the three subphylums of phylum chordata now in subphylum uh, urochordata we'll be studying each subphylum separately subphylum urochordata the notochord is present only in the larval tail so the notochord is present where in the larval condition and in the tail region they are noticed in case of subphylum urochordata the notochord is present in the tail region of the they only present only in the larval tail in adult you cannot see this notochord so body is covered by test the testa made up of tunicin so they have a body covering testa made up of tunicin so they are exclusively marine okay so you can notice that this subphylum urochordata members they are all exclusively marine they are hermaphrodites they have both male and female reproductive structures in the same organism so we call it as hermaphrodites example is acidia uh, the salpa doliolum so they are all the examples of this uh, phylum subphylum urochordata acidia so the salpa 
so dolly olam so you can notice they are almost transparent isn't it so these are the unique structures of this organism which are present in the subphylum urochordata then you have the next subphylum cephalochordata so in cephalochordata the notochord is from the head region to tail region so the notochord is from head region to tail region and it is found throughout their lifetime it is not just seen only in the larval condition it is found throughout their life time you will find this notochord which is from the head region to the tail region they have fish like body see this example is bronchiostoma they have fish like body exclusively they are marine okay so they are found only in oceans sexes are separate that is male and female are separate whereas in tunicata it was hermaphrodite both male and female reproductive organs are found in the same organism example is hasidia uh, the salpa and doliolum so they are the examples for it so notochord from the head to tail region is noticed in the uh, persistent throughout the life in case of subphylum cephalochordata they have fish like body and they are exclusive marine sexes are separate you can see a male branchiostoma and female branchiostoma sexual dimorphism is there sexes are separate example is branchiostoma which is also called as amphioxus or lancelet so they have the notochord from the head to the tail region throughout their lifetime so they have fish like body exclusively marine the sexes are separate example is bronchiostoma or it is also called as amphioxus or lancelet so you can notice all these conditions here they have a notochord ventral uh, the dorsal nerve cord which is hollow and tubular uh, they have fin rays caudal fin so post Uh, anal structures are there in the form of fins so they have this pharyngeal gill slits all the characteristic attributes of uh, the cephalochordata they have example is bronchiostoma or it is also called as amphioxus or lancelet okay the next subphylum is vertebrata very important when concerned with us okay the subphylum vertebrata they possess notochord during the embryonic period so the embryos even we human beings as embryos we have this notochord so they possess the notochord during the embryonic period you can notice this notochord in this embryo condition notochord is replaced by a cartilaginous or bony vertebral column in the adults in the adults you notice that the notochord is replaced by the cartilaginous or bony vertebral column in adult the ventral muscular heart you find so in the ventral region you find the muscular heart kidneys are uh, utilized for excretion and osmoregulation so kidneys are utilized for removal of nitrogenous waste and also for osmoregulation so they have paired appendages it can be either fins or limbs so they have paired appendages which can be either fins or limbs so the phylum chordata the subphylum vertebrata the uh, characteristic features of them are they possess notochord during the embryonic period notochord is later replaced by cartilaginous or bony vertebral column in adult so the ventral they have muscular ventral heart kidneys are present for excretion and osmoregulation they have paired appendages which can be either fins or they can be limbs either fins or limbs so you can notice this uh, all of these are placed under the uh, phylum uh, subphylum vertebrata so petromyzon okay you can remember this uh, then the fishes spices okay they are placed under subphylum uh, the uh, super class spices so all these amphibians reptiles birds and leopard so the mammals birds and mammals they are placed under the super class tetrapoda so super class spices they have this fishes so there are two types again we have this classification but now just know the meaning of Uh, the subphylum vertebrata as well as the characteristic features of vertebrata so these are all the things that you have to remember regarding the 
vertebrates. So they have kidneys for excretion and osmoregulation. They have paired limbs, forelimb and hind limb in case of tetrapoda. Okay, or it can be fins as in case of fishes. They have fins instead of limbs, they have fins. Okay, so these are the vertebral column of uh, fishes, vertebral column of an animal. Okay, they have this vertebral column. This vertebral column uh, notochord is replaced by vertebral column or cartilaginous structure uh, in case of adult. So the subphylum vertebrata will be studying the classification of it. So as I told you, subphylum vertebrata, they have jawless animals, jaw animals. This is an example of jawless animals. Okay, so Pisces, uh, the frog, the amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, they have jaws. Even we have jaws, isn't it? So jawless animals, we call it as Yegnata, or if you want to remember Agnata, whatever you pronounce it as. So the jawless animals are there. Jawed animals are Gnathostomata, from fishes to mammals, all of these are having jaws. So the jawless animals are there. Subphylum vertebrata, you should remember, they are majorly classified into agnatha, agnatha, and gnathostomata. Agnatha, they are jawless animals. Gnathostomata, they have jaws. From Pisces to mammals, all of them have jaws. So we'll just understand the uh, classification of it. See, subphylum vertebrata is also called as craniata because the brain is protected by the skull box or cranium. So subphylum vertebrata is also called as craniata because they have the cranium or skull box which protects the brain. So vertebrata is divided into two types. The agnatha, that is jawless animals, you have only one class under them called as cyclostomata. Okay, and they have this example of petromyzon. The jawless animals example is petromyzon. The gnathostomata, they have this jaws. Okay, they bear jaws. Jaw-bearing animals are again divided into two classes. Superclass Pisces, where they have fins. Superclass Tetrapoda, where they have limbs. So they have four limbs. Tetra means four, poda means limbs. It, is, it doesn't mean four of you go out. Okay, Tetrapoda implies four limbs are there a pair of fore a pair of four limbs a pair of hind limbs are there in superclass tetrapoda whereas in superclass pisces they bear fins they have fins so you have to remember about this vertebrata which has divided into two groups yegnata which is jawless animals and gnathostomata they are jawed animals and the gnathostomata you come across pisces and the amphibians, reptiles, apes, mammals, all of them come under this gnathostomata or jaw-bearing animals. So the gnathostomata is divided into two superclasses, superclass Pisces, which have fins. Examples are, they, they are divided into two classes, chondroictus or cartilaginous fishes and osteichthys or bony fishes. Shark is an example of cartilaginous fishes. Okay, osteichthys, bony fishes. You have this mackerel, mati, or butai, what you call it as. They are all under bony fishes. Okay, so the shark, dogfish, scoliodon, they are all placed under this chondroictus because they are cartilaginous fishes. So the bony fishes we call it as osteichthys. So the superclass Pisces, they can they have fins. So they are of two classes, chondroictus and osteichthys. Okay, the superclass tetrapoda, they have four limbs, a pair of four limb, F-O-R-E, and a pair of hind limbs. So since they have four limbs, tetrapoda, they are called as. So superclass tetrapoda is divided into class amphibia, which consists of frog, toad. Then they consist of superclass tetrapoda, consists of reptilia, which consists of reptiles, like chameleon, snake, superclass aves, they have the birds as example, and superclass mammalia, we have the uh, lion, deer, tiger, deer as example for these superclass mammalia, including human beings, we are placed under superclass mammalia, sorry, the class mammalia. Superclass tetrapoda have limbs, 
they are divided into class amphibia class reptilia or reptiles class caves or birds class mammalia or brush feeding animals which include the tiger deer lion okay human beings the apes the monkeys all of them are placed under the mammals all the brush feeding animals they are placed under the mammalia okay so these are the classification of vertebrata so vertebrata is divided into two groups ignatha jawless animals gnathostomata they are jawed animals they have jaws ignatha has a single class cyclostomata example is petromyzon gnathostomata has divided into two super class super class pisces which have fins and super class tetrapoda which have limbs super class pisces they are of two types uh cartilaginous fishes or chondroictes two classes are there class chondroictes or cartilaginous fishes class osteichthyes or bony fishes then superclass tetrapoda they are divided into four class class amphibia class reptilia class caves and class mammalia now we'll discuss much more detail about the vertebrata so you can see this skeletal framework the vertebral columns of this different types of animals the frog the uh, fishes animals human skeletal system also you can see so the subphylum vertebrata uh, we are going to study the first class cyclostomata so example is petromyzon all these are ectoparasites on some fishes see petromyzon is an ectoparasite on some fishes uh, they the body is elongated without scales they don't have scales and paired fins without scales and paired fins you don't find the paired fins in case of petromyzon they are jawless animals you should remember that and they are ectoparasites they are found attached to other fishes okay they have 6 to 15 pair of gill slits you can see the gill slits they have 6 to 15 pair of gill slits for respiration they have sucking and circular mouth without jaws so using this they get attached to the um, host okay so they are ectoparasites you should know that they get attached to the host using this sucking and circular mouth so they have a cartilaginous cranium they have head the skull is made up of cartilaginous cranium and they have vertebral column circulation is closed type that is the heart pumps the blood into the blood vessels like arteries veins and uh, the capillaries so they have a closed type of circulatory system so respiration is by gill slits which are 6 to 15 in numbers 15 pairs sucking and circular mouth without jaws to get attached to the host they have a cartilaginous cranium and vertebral column circulation is closed type since the blood is pumped into since the heart pumps the blood into the blood vessels like arteries veins and capillaries they are marine but they migrate for spawning or laying eggs to fresh water after laying eggs they die after spawning these uh cyclostomata jawless fishes they die so petromyzon and hagfish mixine we call it as petromyzon is also called as lamprey uh mixine is also called as hagfish okay after spawning they die so their larvae after metamorphosis they return to oceans okay that is how uh, they migrate for spawning to fr fresh water this uh, lamprey or the mixine the hagfish and uh, they die after spawning their larvae after metamorphosis they return to ocean so this is what you have to remember regarding the uh, class cyclostomata which belongs to the jawless animals or ignatha two examples there you have to remember in jawless animals one is uh, the petromyzon which is called as lamprey and another is uh, the hagfish or mixine mixine is the uh, scientific name hagfish is its common name okay so the next thing that we are going to study is the uh, subphylum vertebrata and uh, under the group uh, gnathostomata jawed animals we are going to study the first superclass pisces so pisces they are 
fish are super class spices. So based on the type of uh, skeleton that they have, whether they are made up of cartilage or bones, two types of super class spices are there. So the class chondroictis or cartilaginous fishes, class osteictis or bony fishes. So they are the two types of uh, super class spices that you have to remember. So spices, they have fins. They don't have appendages. They have fins for swimming. So chondroictis, class chondroictis or cartilaginous fishes, class osteictis or bony fishes. Okay. So here you can notice the different variety of ornamental fishes and colorful fishes that are noticed in the uh, oceans like the clownfish. So the angel uh, fish. Okay. Different types of fishes are there. So you should remember the differences between this chondroictis and osteictis. So the cartilaginous fishes, they are all marine. They have a streamlined body and most of them are predators. The marine and freshwater osteictis, even they have this streamlined body. So the endoskeleton is made up of cartilage in case of chondroictis and notochord is persistent throughout the life. Whereas in osteictis, they have an endoskeleton which is bony in nature and notochord is not persistent throughout life. So cartilaginous endoskeleton they have and notochord is present throughout their lifetime. Whereas in case of osteictis, they have a bony endoskeleton and notochord is not persistent throughout their life. So they have a ventral mouth. You can see the position of mouth. So they have ventral mouth and very powerful jaws because most of them are predators, the cartilaginous fishes. Whereas in case of the bony fishes, you can notice that they have a terminal mouth. They don't have a ventral mouth. They have a terminal mouth. So the gill slits without operculum, there is no flap covering the gill slits. Whereas in case of bony fishes, you can see this operculum. If you remove that operculum, you can see the gills inside. So they have four pairs of gills with operculum on either side of the fishes. So this flap-like structure, we call it as operculum. This is a, a cartla fish that they have given as an example for bony fishes. So they have four pairs of gills with operculum on each side. You can see the flap-like structure. And when you open this flap-like structure, that is the operculum, inside you find four pairs of gills, okay? So ventral mouth, you can notice in case of this chondroictis or uh, the cartilaginous fishes. Gill slits, you can see it is naked. They are not covered by operculum. There is no gill covering. So there is four pairs of gills with operculum on either side. So the flap, the superculum, you can notice. Within inside, you can notice the gills. So you can open this part of it and notice these gills. Also, the cartilaginous fishes, they have uh, placoid scales. You can notice this sort of scales. Even the teeth is a modified placoid scales, which are backwardly directed. So the exoskeleton, in case of chondroictis, it is made up of placoid scales. Even the teeth is inwardly modified placoid scales, which are backwardly directed. So even the teeth is modified placoid scales, which are backwardly directed. So these are the placoid scales, which you find on the, uh, as an exoskeleton on the cartilaginous fissures. Whereas the bony fissures, the scales are cycloid or tenoid scales they have. So placoid scales, you find it in case of chondroictis. So, and even the teeth is a modified uh, placoid scales which are backwardly directed. Whereas the scales in case of bony fishes, they are cycloid. You can notice this sort of cyclic arrangement or they can be tenoid. So they might be either cycloid or tenoid scales in case of bony fishes. There is no air bladder for the cartilaginous fishes. So they have to continuously swim to avoid sinking. If they don't swim, they sink. So they do not have air bladder. Whereas in case of this osteichthys, they have air bladder. So you can notice this big air bladder or swim bladder, we call it as which helps them to float. Okay, they need not have to continuously swim. The cartilaginous fishes have to continuously swim because they do not have air bladder. So whereas 
the bony fishes they have this air bladder which helps them to float so air bladder is for buoyancy is present in case of this bony fishes so the cartilaginous fishes and the bony fishes both of them are cold blooded animals cartilaginous fishes two chambered heart one auricular and one ventricle similarly even the bony fishes are two chambered heart with one auricular and one ventricle okay so poikilotherms means they cannot they do not have a constant body temperature poikilothermic or cold blooded animals are those whose body temperature depends upon the external environment so they do not have a constant body temperature whereas we are all human beings are warm blooded animals mammals are warm blooded animals what does it imply a body temperature is going to be constant and it is not affected by the external environment so our body struggles to maintain a constant body temperature of 36.4 degree centigrade okay so we are all warm blooded animals or homeothermic animals cold blooded animals they do not have a constant body temperature their body temperature is dependent upon the external environment so we call those sort of animals as cold blooded animals so contrary to this you can also notice the sexes are separate male and female fishes you can notice uh, even in bony fishes you can notice male and female are separate in males pelvic fins they have claspers so claspers are absent in case of uh, in males the pelvic fins have claspers in case of bony fishes there is no claspers they have external fertilization okay so mostly oviparous so there are no claspers in case of bony fishes so internal fertilization that is within the female body the male and female gamete fuse in case of cartilaginous fishes and they are give birth to young one cartilaginous fishes whereas the bony fishes external fertilization they liberate the gametes in the water so they fuse in the water and they are oviparous that is they are mostly oviparous egg laying so fishes are the bony fishes are egg laying whereas the cartilaginous fishes they give birth to young one so development is direct there is no larval stage in case of bony fishes okay so you can notice in this slide the males they have claspers at the pelvic fins bears claspers females they don't have it in cartilaginous fishes both male and females don't have this claspers in case of bony fishes okay so here they have dissected this bony fish and they have shown this female ovary and male testes you can see this in the case of bony fishes okay so the male and female are separate in case of both of them uh, bony and cartilaginous fishes cartilaginous fishes has internal fertilization they give birth to young ones whereas the bony fishes they exhibit external fertilization and they lay eggs okay development is direct so now if they ask you to write salient features of class contract this write all the characters of this contract this which has been listed here that would be sufficient if they ask you to write salient features of bony fishes write all the characters that are mentioned here in the bony fishes okay so that would be sufficient for your salient features of it now if you look into the example of cartilaginous fishes scoliodon or dog fish is a cartilaginous fishes then carcharodon the great white shark the most of them are predators you should understand about them scoliodon or dog fish the carcharodon great white shark so this is a, a predator and they are cartilaginous fish then pristis or saw fish see they are uh jaw is drawn into a long uh structure just look uh, just like pinocchio nose isn't it so they are drawn into a long structure and they have serrate edges at them that is the reason they call it as saw fish just like the carpenter saw they have serrate edges so they call it as saw fish then trigon or stingray it has a poisonous sting then torpedo or electric ray so the stingray 
the electric ray it has electric organ so they are all predator forms and all of them are cartilaginous fishes they are example for cartilaginous fishes so the uh, scoliodon or dogfish carcharodon or the great white shark okay pristis sawfish then uh, the stingray or trigon it has poisonous sting so uh, the torpedo electric ray it has an electric organ they uh, create electric shocks to capture the prey or to shock the predators they use this electric shock not only for defense but also for capturing food they use this okay so the trigon has a stingray so these are the examples of cartilaginous fishes now the examples of uh, the bony fishes so you can see here the marine fishes so the exocetus flying fish if you have watched this movie of pi life of pi they show this flying fishes okay which he captures for a short distance above the water they can glide using this wing like fins that they have so we call this fishes as exocetus hippocampus sea horse so that is also a bony fish labio these are edible fishes so rohu or ragu you call it as in canada the rohu fish katla fish so the scientific name is katla katla again it is a toto name because both genera and species they have the same spellings in katla katla so we call it as a toto name then this is mise mino or clarius magur so this is the uh, catfish okay so these are all freshwater forms edible fishes okay aquarium fishes you might have seen this fighting fish or betta they are called as and this angel fish or terophyllum so these are some aquarium fishes so i want you to uh, make a, a write an assignment and submit it in the uh, your uh, class classroom part of it assignment assignment where you have to write uh, at least five marine edible fishes so the sea form like you have i'll give you some example you have to write its uh, vernacular name if you speak malayalam or telugu you have to write the telugu name kannada name english name and scientific name if you are only your mother tongue is kannada you just have to write kannada name uh, english name scientific name okay so if your language is mother tongue is different than four languages one in your mother tongue what is its named as then kannada english and uh, the scientific name you have to write five edible marine fishes five edible freshwater fishes five edible uh, not edible five any five aquarium fishes if you can get the names in kannada well and good but english and scientific name you can get already we have given two examples are here so the freshwater fishes almost all these three are there rohu fish labio rohita katla katla clarius the catfish okay marine fishes you have this uh, bangda which we call it as mackerel then butai or mati mean what we call it as that is the uh, sardine fishes okay then there is marine fishes you have this uh, tuna fish which is also the edible fish then you also have this uh, lot of variety are there in marine forms that 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 are consumed okay so you can even write about this uh, angel fish or seer fish they call it as vanjram in tamil okay angel fish they are the seer fish so write its names i want you to make this assignment and submit it to me by uh, this saturday i should receive all the uh, assignments i'll also be making a note of this assignment in the uh, notebook uh, i mean the classroom assignment part i'll be giving it that so you have to write the uh, five edible marine fishes five edible freshwater fishes aquarium fish not edible it is just aquarium fish that are commonly cultivated so you have to write its uh, 
Kannada name, if your mother tongue is Kannada, you'll be writing it Kannada name, English name and scientific name. Uh, if your mother tongue is a different language, so in your mother tongue, Kannada, English and scientific name. So this you have to write five edible marine fishes, five edible freshwater fishes, any five aquarium fishes. Don't go in search of edible aquarium fishes. There is no such thing. Aquarium fishes. So you have to write. So there are a lot of varieties, isn't it? So you have this uh, Vastu fish. Uh, then you have these, uh, what you call it as, uh, Goramis, uh, Guppies. A lot of aquarium fishes are there. Okay. So you can write the scientific names of them. Parrot fish is there. So the common name, if you can find the Canada name, well and good. And the scientific name. So that is the assignment and that completes for our discussion for today's class. So what all we discuss in today's class. So we discussed about 